In our previous video lessons, we have already discussed the inverse sine and the inverse cosine functions. In this lesson, we are going to study the other inverse trigonometric functions. Let us start with the inverse tangent function. This is the graph of y equals tangent inverse x. What is the domain of this function? Take note that this graph will actually continue here. You have an arrow here. So therefore, your domain is the set of all real numbers. You will get all possible x-coordinates. What about the range? For your range, notice that if we get all the y-coordinates, so for example, this one, I'm just projecting everything to the y-axis because we are getting the y-coordinates. What will we get in the y-axis? Take note that in the y-axis, we were able to cover negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. But pi over 2 and negative pi over 2 are not included. We have a horizontal asymptote here. The range here is open interval negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. This is the definition of the inverse tangent function. y is equal to tangent inverse x if and only if tangent of y is equal to x. Again, this is sort of like you're putting the tangent inverse on the other side, but it will now become tangent. Take note that your x here belongs in the domain of the tangent inverse, and the domain is a set of all real numbers. So therefore, this x here is any real number, and y, this is part of the range of your tangent inverse. It lies in the open interval negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, and we know that the range of tangent inverse is the open interval negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Just like with the inverse sine and inverse cosine, we can perform cancellations as long as it satisfies certain conditions. We have tangent of tangent inverse x is equal to x. We can cancel this too if this quantity here lies in the range of tangent. Recall that the range of tangent function is the set of real numbers. Whereas here, the outermost function is tangent inverse. And what is the range of tangent inverse? You get an angle which is between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Next, we have the graph of y equals cotangent inverse x. Notice the difference of this one from y equals tangent inverse x. Cotangent inverse x is a decreasing function, whereas the inverse tangent function is an increasing function. What else? This one has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0 and y equals pi, whereas for the inverse tangent function, its horizontal asymptotes occurs at y equals negative pi over 2 and y equals pi over 2. What is the domain of this function? So just like the inverse tangent function, its domain is also the set of all real numbers. The only difference with the inverse tangent is that its range is now ranging from 0 up to pi. And it's open. So it's a bit similar to the range of inverse cosine. However, 0 and pi are not included. Here is the definition of the inverse cotangent function. Again, y is equal to cotangent inverse x if and only if cotangent y is equal to x. Your x here is any real number because that is the domain of cotangent inverse. And the answer to cotangent inverse of a number is an angle which is between 0 to pi. You can cancel cotangent and cotangent inverse as long as they satisfy these properties. You can always cancel if you have cotangent. But for cotangent inverse, you can only cancel them if the expression here is between 0 to pi. Why is that? Since the outermost function is cotangent inverse, it means that the answer is an angle which must be between 0 to pi. 
We also have the graph here of y equals secant inverse x. Take note that this one has a horizontal asymptote at y equals pi over 2. What is the domain of y equals secant inverse x? If you project the x coordinates of these points, and for this one as well, what did we cover in the x axis? We were able to cover this up to this. This will continue, and starting from 1. It will continue. Therefore, our domain is the open interval, negative infinity up to negative 1, this part, union, 1 to infinity. What about our range? For our range, we will project everything to the y-axis. And what did we cover? This interval. Take note that this is the point negative 1 pi. So therefore, pi is included. This is pi. We have a horizontal asymptote at y equals pi over 2. So therefore, pi over 2 is not included. And this is the point 1, 0. So therefore, 0 is included. Hence, our range is 0 to pi, but we take away pi over 2. Here is the definition of inverse secant function. y is equal to secant inverse x if and only if secant of y is equal to x. x here lies in the domain, and the domain is negative infinity up to negative 1. So that means x is less than or equal to negative 1 or x is greater than 1. And your y, that's part of the range. And we know that the range is from 0 to pi, but actually you have to take away pi over 2. Again, we can cancel these two as long as they satisfy certain conditions. If the outermost function is secant, you can only cancel if this thing here belongs in the range of secant. And the range of secant, recall that that is negative infinity to negative 1 union, 1 to infinity. And for secant inverse, if the outermost function is secant inverse, secant inverse is an angle between 0 to pi. That's why you have this. But you cannot have pi over 2. For our last inverse trigonometric function, we have y equals cosecant inverse of x. We have a horizontal asymptote here at y equals 0. Let us identify the domain and range of this function. For our domain, we will get the points in our graph and project them along our x-axis. That will give us the possible x-coordinates for this one as well. And therefore, we were able to cover negative 1 up to negative infinity and then 1 to infinity as well. Negative 1 and 1 are both included. Hence, the domain is negative infinity up to negative 1, closed union, 1 to infinity. For our range, we will again project it along the y-axis. And therefore, we will able to cover pi over 2 up to 0 and then 0 up to negative pi over 2. Pi over 2 is included because of this point. This is the point 1 pi over 2. Is 0 included? No, 0 here is not included. This We have a horizontal asymptote here. How about negative pi over 2? That's included as well because we have the point negative 1, negative pi over 2. So hence, our range is negative pi over 2. Up to pi over 2, we just take away 0.
Here is now the definition of inverse cosecant function. Y is equal to cosecant inverse x if and only if cosecant of y is equal to x. The domain of cosecant inverse is negative infinity up to negative 1. Union 1 to infinity and its range is also negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 but y cannot be equal to 0. We again have this cancellation rules here. Memorizing the range of the four inverse trigonometric functions can be difficult. Here is what I do to memorize that. I divide them into two. The first group will be the ones whose range will be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And the other one will be from 0 to pi. The first group will be sine inverse tangent inverse, and cosecant inverse. And the other group, this one has range from 0 to pi. This will be the other half. Cosine inverse, cotangent inverse, and secant inverse. Of course, we have some exclusions. What do I mean by this? For tangent inverse, the range is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, but these two are not included pi over 2 and negative pi over 2 are not included. For cosecant inverse, we exclude 0. How about for this group here? For cotangent inverse, we exclude 0 pi. And for secant inverse, we are excluding pi over 2. Let us have some examples. Find the exact value of the following. First, we have tangent inverse of 1 and tangent inverse of negative square root of 3. It's very important that you know the range because you have to know where your angle lies. For tangent inverse, this will give you an angle which is between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. This one, they belong to this group. We are looking for an angle such that it lies here between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 and tangent of theta is equal to 1. If you put this on the other side, it will become tangent. What is that angle whose tangent is equal to 1? That is just pi over 4 because its sine and cosine are just the same. Next, tangent inverse of negative square root of 3, let that be equal to theta. We are looking for an angle whose tangent is equal to negative square root of 3. Since your tangent is negative, you belong on the fourth quadrant. And you can just write this as negative square root of 3 over 2 over positive 1 half. And what is this special angle here? The y-coordinate is negative square root of 3 over 2. So therefore, what is this angle? It's a big angle, so therefore this is pi over 3. What is now the name of this angle? This is negative pi over 3. Next, we want to evaluate cosecant inverse of 2. We have to know first where our angle lies. From here, cosecant inverse, the angle will be between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 as well. Let this be equal to theta. So we are looking for an angle such that 2 is equal to cosecant of theta. Whenever I have trigonometric function which is not sine, cosine, or tangent, I always write them using those three. I will now write cosecant of theta as 1 over sine theta. Because it's easier to imagine the angle if it's just expressed in terms of sine, cosine, and tangent. So therefore, this means that sine theta is equal to 1 half. Here is 1 half. Therefore, we are on the first quadrant. And what is this angle? This is pi over 6. Lastly, we have cotangent inverse of negative 1. Where does our angle lie? 
For cotangent inverse, it will give you an angle which lies on the interval 0 to pi. This means that negative 1 is equal to cotangent of theta. Since we have cotangent, I want to express this in terms of tangent. Tangent theta is negative 1. Our tangent is negative, so therefore you lie on quadrant 2. And what is that angle? That is the angle on quadrant 2 whose reference angle is pi over 4. So therefore our theta is 3 pi over 4. Let us have some more examples. We want cotangent inverse of negative square root of 3 over 3. Our angle theta will lie on which quadrant? This angle will be from 0 to pi. Let's get rid of the cotangent inverse. This means that negative square root of 3 over 3 is equal to cotangent theta. Let us write this in terms of tangent by flipping our fraction. Take note that negative square root of 3 over 3 is negative 1 over square root of 3. So therefore, tangent theta is negative square root of 3. What is that angle? This negative square root of 3 will just come from square root of 3 over 2 all over 1 half. What is that angle? You are on the second quadrant because your tangent is negative. And which one should be negative? The x-coordinate. So I will write the negative here because I'm on quadrant 2. What is this reference angle? This is pi over 3. So therefore, our theta here is pi minus pi over 3. That is 2 pi over 3. Next, we have secant inverse of negative 1. For secant inverse, the angle must be between 0 to pi. So thus, this means that negative 1 is equal to secant of theta. In terms of cosine, cosine theta is negative 1. Where does that occur? Here. So our theta is equal to pi. Next. Here are some cancellations. Let's see whether we can cancel. Here, the outermost function is tangent. When can we cancel this? Can we cancel it? And will this be equal to 4? Yes, because the outermost function is tangent and the range of tangent is the set of all real numbers. So you can always cancel for tangent. What about this one? The outermost function is tangent inverse. You can only cancel if the angle that you get lies on the interval negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Clearly, 2 pi over 3 does not fit the criteria. Therefore, we cannot cancel. This is not equal to 2 pi over 3. However, 2 pi over 3 is a special angle. You can easily compute the value. Tangent of 2 pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2 over negative 1 half. This is negative square root of 3. And what is tangent of negative square root of 3? You will be on the fourth quadrant with reference angle of pi over 3 as well. Therefore, this angle here is negative pi over 3. For our last example, we want to find tangent of cosine inverse of negative one-third. We have a cosine inverse here, so therefore this is just an angle. This now becomes tangent of theta. Where is our theta? Theta is the cosine inverse of a number. And for cosine inverse, you get an angle which is on what interval? It will lie on... 0 to pi. Let me just go back to this one. We have here that theta is cosine inverse of negative one third, where theta is between 0 to pi. Let's get rid of cosine inverse. We will get cosine theta is negative one third. Take note, we know that cosine theta is negative one third and we want tangent theta, so therefore how do we proceed? We just use our 
x, y, r. Since cosine is negative, you are on the second quadrant. So probably this point. So therefore, your x is negative and your y is positive. Cosine is x over r. So therefore, this is negative 1. And then r is 3. What is the relationship between these three? We have x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So therefore, y squared is 3 squared minus the square of negative 1, which is 9 minus 1, 8. So hence, y is square root of 8. So that's 2 square root of 2. Therefore, our tangent of theta is equal to y over x. So that's 2 square root of 2.